My son appeared to be a medical mystery. The, with the, the testing, we went to internists and we went to neurologists, physicians, emergency rooms, hospitals. I was outside working with my dad trying to do some landscaping and I noticed I had a tick. Over the next week or so, um, I started to get these headaches and they were kind of a minor deal at first. And then it got to the point where I couldn't really do anything. No one really had an explanation. And after being tested with what was at the time, the current test methods for tick exposure disease, um, having MRIs of his sinuses, ruling out the possibility of a brain tumor, it was labeled as something that is called teenage migraines. Being a veterinarian and a mother as well, I just could not believe that my son, out of clear blue, could have teenage migraines. And in North Carolina, since he recently had a tick bite, one of those thoughts was, could this be an illness carried by a tick or even a flea? So if it was good enough for my patients that are four-legged, I had to think, what about what we do for testing? So that's when I contacted North Carolina State University, the Vector-Borne Disease Lab, Dr. Ed Brightsworth, and asked for some help. When Betsy's son got sick, and because there had been a recent history of tick attachment, she brought us a sample to test. And lo and behold, within 24 hours, they had found the DNA of the Bartonella in my son's blood when all the current testing, which was for antibodies for the variety of tick diseases, was negative. Bartonella is a uh, small bacteria. Uh, it lives in a variety of uh, different host animals. Um, and uh, it can be transmitted to humans. Uh, we believe uh, through contact, direct contact with those animals. There is now uh, increasing evidence that um, Bartonella species can be transmitted by other biting uh, insects. So the older techniques that we and others were using 10 to 15 years ago actually would allow researchers to find Bartonella hensley in the blood of cats, but it is very difficult to find these same bacteria in the blood of a horse, a human, or a dog. We were very surprised when we got Bartonella out of Jason Sigmund. For many people, there's a line in the sand that these diseases are of animals and these diseases are, are of people. The reality is that 70% of the diseases that we know of are shared by both. Increasingly, we realize that working in an interdisciplinary fashion, such as in following the One Health example, is the best way to answer our scientific questions. I have a son that in eighth grade was promised zero future other than it was a big deal to get out of bed and not be in fetal position. The crossover for me has meant that I have a son that's healthy. I think very clearly Bartonella is one of the best contemporary examples of why One Health and One Medicine is critically important. None of us know all the information that's necessary to effectively address these problems and questions or to provide the answers that society deserves.